Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN. And this digital rebar training video is about the version 4.6 cluster pattern. Uh, in version 4.6, we took advantage of several new features that had come together uh, in the 4, 4 version contexts, uh, some of our ability to detect and wait for events from the command line, and rethought how we wanted multi-system clustering to work. In the past, we've relied on effectively a semaphore system run by the leader of a cluster to coordinate activity in the cluster. With the addition of context, we actually have the ability to create a machine that is nothing but a cluster manager. And from that perspective, we can start to look at a cluster as a coordinated set of activities where there are activities that are not dependent on any of the machine in the cluster. This is important for Kubernetes clusters where we're building uh, kube cuddle actions or doing building things outside of the cluster for VMware clusters where we're building up a VMware uh, system and then talking to the clusters API um, or any situation where you need to coordinate activity among several different machines for either a long period of time or a short period of time. A long period of time would be if you want to rotate uh, leadership in a cluster or pull machines in and out and coordinate that activity. Uh, we have a pattern that actually helps you build all those things in a pretty straightforward way. So let me walk you through the process using these, these slides. Uh, and it's important to note, this slides work for both the cloud-based version that I'm about to show you or the PyLab, which is what the slides are based on. So in the Edge Lab, uh, we don't use a containerized system. There just isn't enough resources. We use the uh, Digital Rebar Manager, the Bootstrap server, as that cluster host. The concepts are very similar, and so the, the same work would work in either situation. The way this goes is that that first machine, that, that cluster manager machine, spins up a system, and we're gonna use the K3S cluster build in this case to examine this. And you can look at kubelib, this is where all of this code is based, um, plus some library dependencies for the cluster management, of course. That cluster build pattern starts with a cluster initialization that makes sure that there is a, a, cl a cluster filter. So. The way we identify machines in a cluster with this pattern is we use a filter. Uh, basically, it's a digital rebar CLI filter path that says, I need all of the machines that match this uh, set. And it could be a profile, that's the default. You could identify it by a different parameter or a name of a machine or an edge or a site. Anything that you can specify as a filter with multiple parts, you can use as a cluster uh, profile filter. So if you have new machines that don't have a value set, you could do that. Um, it's a lot of different options in this case. That initialization um, will also check the leader of that system and elect a leader if there isn't a leader set and make sure that all of the members in that filter are also in the cluster profile set. So a lot, a lot happens in cluster init. You can do all that manually, but there's a stage that takes care of it. From there, we have the thing that really builds the cluster. And there's a single task that starts a loop. So it gets all of the leaders based on the filter and the leader flag. And it starts a workflow, It'd be your choice. In this case, it's C, uh, K3S machine install. And then it waits for that to complete. There is a standard process now um, that you can call that does wait for all the machines in your cluster to reach a workflow complete. That's effectively a milestone. And then you can tag those milestones together when you want to synchronize operations across your cluster, whether it's one action in sequence or multiple actions in parallel. In this case, we're doing a sequential operation. Once the, the workflow completes, then we will start all of the other machines in the cluster, the workers, non-leaders, and start their workflows. You'll note in this that it would be possible to be do more nuanced operations inside of this loop. This is a pretty simple one. So the way that looks is we actually have our second machine. It's our leader. We have start that K3S machine install and it starts doing the install tasks. The install task will generate the join token for the other machines and the cube config file that's necessary to do downstream work. As soon as that workflow is completed, we can then immediately start installing the other machines. They pull down the join token and start their operations. We don't have to wait 
for additional those machines to come up though. So we can immediately start at the host at the cluster manager level doing cluster-wide operations because we have a working machine. That means we can install the dashboard using uh, the dashboard install kube cuddle process and then run any Helm charts that you've queued up and requested for the system to go. So in this case, we are literally going through that process. Um, in the middle of this and, and sort of hidden in these tasks is also a cache downloader. So one of the other advancements in this system, in this process that we added is the download steps actually do checksums, download, and then store the downloaded files into digital rebar. So you don't have to keep going back to the internet or you could pre-warm the cache with exactly the versions that you wanted and store them in digital rebar and eliminate the supply chain issues of having to pull anything from the internet to make all this stuff go. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Oh, one other point before I go, go here. If there's a failure, uh, the workflows don't complete and you have a chance to correct and fix. So like everything else we do in Digital Rebar, we don't like to run things forward if there's an error. And so an error is not a workflow complete and the system will let you halt and wait. So here's a digital rebar system that I've built. It has all of these components already pre-staged for me. I have a runner system, a containerized system that is my cluster. And then I have three machines that are set up um, using a basic CentOS machine in the cloud. Uh, and those have already been provisioned and they have machine IP addresses. So that all looks good. What I wanna do here is start the cluster manager. So I can go into my workflow. I can say K3S. See if it's installed, it's not. So since we don't have the kubelib installed yet, I do need to go get that in my catalog. So here, over here is my catalog. I just need kubelib. So here's this. Uh, this is ultimately gonna replace our, I'm gonna get the very latest version. This is ultimately gonna replace uh, the Kubernetes install crib um, using this new cluster pattern. So. Uh, right now we started with K3S, it's just a little bit simpler and Edge Lab consumes that right away. If you're using Edge Lab, you would do this process. It doesn't, its filter is already pre-wired. You don't have to go through the step I'm about to show you. When I go to K3S cluster build, remember machine install is the thing that's gonna be kicked off by cluster build and run it. It's gonna go through and fail. This is expected. I'm at cluster initialize and it's telling me very clearly there's a fix required. No members match the profile. Pro, there's no match for profiles equal K3S cluster. So what's happened here is the initialize step couldn't find any members of the cluster. It went and built a profile, K3S cluster, and no nobody's in that yet. Uh, the name of this cluster, by the way, is generated by the machine name. So if I had called this Rob's cluster, the profile would be Rob's cluster. So all I have to do is over here, come in, and there's my K3S cluster, excellent. I add it in. Now I have machines in the cluster. If I come back over here, I don't have to, to do anything but tell the workflow that I'm ready to go, and now it'll start. It's doing exactly, I'm gonna minimize a little bit so you can see it more easily on screen. It's doing exactly what you expect. Here is our leader getting installed and it's going through that machine install process. The first time I'm doing this, I have to download components, so it'll be a little slower. It finished that step and now the secondary machines are picking up. <laughs> They're already done. And you can see simultaneously it's going through and doing that lib dashboard install. Uh, once it finishes that, it's gonna whip through Helm because I don't really have any Helm charts to find and my <laughs> K3S cluster is complete. That's why I start with the slides first. It happens so fast, it's hard to actually see everything that's going. Um, and if I jump into that, that profile, what you'll see is here is my dashboard token. So I could log into the dashboard. Here's my cube config file. And here is my node token. Those are the things in that shared cluster. Um, and it's basically a ready to go cluster. My leader is clearly identified. If I jump into the leader, you'll see cluster leader is true. So I could have pre-wired what those are. Cluster manager over here is actually identified as the cluster manager. Um, and this cluster profile once again uses, and we've been using this pattern, uh, it's specially wired in digital rebar with permissions. Uh, if you define cluster profile and name it the name of the cluster, then it will create a token that allows machines to edit that shared profile. 
and that's it. Um, super fast. If I want to um, basically restart this pattern, uh, I can do that. These are just cloud machines, so I can destroy them, uh, let them decommission, and uh, recommission them. That'll take just a couple, a couple of seconds, and I'll explain some things while we wait for that. Uh, the other thing I'd want to do here is go in and clean up. Now, <laughs> these credentials are not helpful anymore since we just destroyed the cluster. That's great. Uh, but since I, I can leave the cluster defined, grab these machines, provision them again uh, in the cloud. In this case, I'm using our pooling functionality to uh, provision, deprovision. It's super, super handy way to um, keep machines around and make them available as a, as a quick resource pool. Uh, in the cloud, and it's going to go back through and take those steps and do that work. Thanks to the magic of time lapse, I just sped forward in that provisioning cycle so I could repeat the uh, cluster install. And in this case, it's going to be very simple. Um, I just start over here, go to my workflows, K3S cluster build, not machine install. I'm going to clear it so I can reapply it. That looks good. And uh, apply my cluster build and it will go through the process and literally start this uh, same cluster. It doesn't have to do the install, so it'll be even faster. Uh, my leader is installed, didn't reelect it. Uh, once it's completed that, it kicks off the two workers and in parallel does the dashboard. So overall, I'm doing uh, K3S installs in about 15, 20 seconds. Uh, if I go to my jobs list, I could see the actual time, time durations. Um, so 12 seconds, that's my dashboard install, uh, 14, 15 seconds to get, uh, plus another five or six. So yeah, sub, sub 30 second, uh, K3S deployments for you. If you have any questions, please come in, uh, play with edge lab. It's under $500 gives you pies, but you can do this with any infrastructure on any cloud. It's super straightforward. If you have other questions, please let us know at rackend.com. Otherwise, I hope this uh, tutorial about the V46 digital rebar cluster pattern was helpful. Thanks a lot. This is Rob Hirschfeld signing out.